How are you? I'm well and you? Fine, Great. fine. How, how is the weather there? Um, today it's uh, cloudy. It's been very hot in the past few days, but today it's cloudy and windy. Mm -hmm. But uh, in South Africa, it's uh, summer. Let's say, yeah. Yes, it's summer. Mm -hmm. uh, it because summer. when we when we have winter, you have summer. Yes. Today, yesterday was minus four in the morning. Uh, oh my God! Degrees. Yes, and uh, but today oh it was uh, today it was one degree, but I think it will warm up to four degrees. Oh my gosh! I have experienced yes. minus four degrees, and it's not pleasant. <laughs> no way. <yeah. laughs> <laughs> so I said, yeah. "Oh, um, first of all, I I really want to thank you for accepting this because it is so important." And guess what I have. Guess what I have? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Praise the Lord. That is yes, so beautiful. But, thank you. Thank you. Yes. So much. First of all, yes. To see yes. First of all, just introduce yourself, your name, where you live, what you do. It's important. Mm. Yes. Thank you. My name is Takarani Jube, I live in Durban. I am uh -huh. a medical doctor. I see myself as a healer because I not only uh, see uh, uh, heal health in terms of physical well being, but in terms of spiritual, social, emotional, and financial well being. And yeah. so whenever I see people and treat them, I treat them holistically. Um, I am an author and I have written that book that you just raised, uh, Bantus, the untold history of Africa mm -hmm. and her people from creation. Yes. Uh, as also, thank you so much, as a, 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 another way for me to bring healing to people generally all over. Uh, in a more accessible way, because if you don't understand yourself and locate can locate yourself in your past, you are unable to understand yourself in the present and will not be able to contribute to the future. Wow. And that inability to do that is what is the source of a lot of mental health diseases at the moment which in turn creates a vicious cycle in physical, men, physical ill health and also social ill health. And then it just becomes a storm that feeds itself. And we are raising a generation of young people who are not well at all emotionally, spiritually, and physically. And because of that, they're not able to eke out a living and become a meaningful contributors to society. And therefore, we are having a pandemic of obesity, diabetes, hypertension, and all that. So depression. Uh, this is my contribution to say, let's turn the tide around and go back to what is meaningful. Wow. Amazing. What I like mm -hmm. about, uh, you know, about your introduction is that, you know, you talk of holistic, even financially. Yeah, because yes. at the end of the day, financial success is also important. Mm -hmm. Because yes, it's, it is. it's from that financial success that you're able to educate your children, <clears throat> give them nice college, give them therapy, you know, everything. that, uh, that mm -hmm. you, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I am uh, a founder of uh, International African School. It's an online school. You know, people say, where are the students? <laughs> It's an international school, <laughs> yes. And um, I I teach history, you know, African culture in schools here. You know, in the Netherlands, uh, yes. there's no curriculum about Africa. But what is mm. also, but what is, yes, there is nothing. There is Whoa. nothing. So this is what Whoa. I do. I go to tell them about Africa. Wow. And it's not it's not only schools, even companies are interested in yeah. knowing about Africa. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. But what is also interesting in uh, in uh, schools also in Africa, they ask what is Africa-centered curriculum? 
uh, our what own schools Africa? in Africa. Yes. Most of them, they ask what is Africa-centered curricula. It's where wow. we put Africa as the center. Because you wow. notice that most or even all the curriculums we have in Africa, they're Eurocentric. Yeah. We inherited mm -hmm. from our colonizers. Yeah. 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 And that is why yeah. it is so important, you know, people like you who have written such beautiful books, we need to mm -hmm. let the world know so that they can access mm -hmm. knowledge and use them. Yes. yes, yes, indeed. So in this book, you have covered extensively about Ubuntu. Yes. And last year in December, I was invited by a company to elaborate on Ubuntu. What oh, is wow. the Yes, it was amazing. Wow. I, in fact, I did a video only that it's in Dutch. I wish it was in yes. English. I will also do another one in English. Wow. Uh, so, uh, so they really wanted to know what Ubuntu was and I did my best to explain because number one, mm -hmm. actually, you know, that is our culture as African yes. people. That is how we have mm -hmm. been brought in. But now mm -hmm. you as the writer, I'd like you to mm -hmm. define Ubuntu. Can you explain yeah. to people who yes. know nothing about Ubuntu what Ubuntu is? Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Adria, for that opportunity to do so. Um, <clears throat> I always say to people, and I see it is one of the questions that you would like us to delve into, but I just thought, mm -hmm. let me go into it right at the beginning. Yeah. Uh, because you're asking me to define Ubuntu. Mm -hmm. um, one of the reasons why we need to define it, Ubuntu is not something that needs to be defined. Mm -hmm. Ubuntu is something that the African has written in their genetic material because it is the way of life that we have lived for the past millennia. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, ad, my father would say ad infinitum into the past. Mm -hmm. um, this is how the African finding himself on earth has been able to recognize himself within his natural environment and recognize that he is not only a physical being, but also a spiritual being that interacts in both uh, uh, the, the dimensions, the visible and the invisible dimension. And so they have gathered knowledge over the millennium, which, and they have lived out that knowledge and that wisdom and socialized their children in that wisdom and knowledge over thousands of years until yeah. colonialism. And so it is, it is, if you go to any African person <clears throat> who, uh, whose, 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 whose genealogy has not been disturbed by colonization, they immediately know how to be umuntu to yeah. another umuntu. They immediately know how to do that. In, in, in the greeting, in the recognition of another person, in their speech with another person, they know immediately how to do that. But unfortunately, we now have to define Ubuntu because we have lost that. Colonization yeah. came and cut that off mm -hmm. uh, completely and cut that off completely and rendered us unable to see one another. You cannot practice a Ubuntu unless you are, recog you are, you are able to recognize Ubuntu. So Ubuntu uh, comes, yes. I just want, let me just cut you short there. You know, I'm, yes. I'm Luya from Kenya. Yes. And Luya's a Bantu. They belong to the yes. Bantu group. Yes. So what you're saying, Umuntu, we call Mundu. Yes. You see the similarities? Yes. And then Umuntu, that. we call Shinamundu. Shinamundu. Please forgive me. I just realized my bed was dying. I it's thought okay. I was charging all this time. <laughs> oh, I also need, I think I also need to connect mine. So it's okay. 
<laughs> okay. Thank you so Thank much. You for, yeah. Me. Yeah, for me, I have uh, I have a line here. I can just connect. Yes. Yes. Chinamundu. Chinamundu. Yeah. That yes. is how we call it. A, a, kind yeah. of, a kind of explaining humanity, empathy. Yes. You know, yes. it's all that. Eh? So I see that you are a living, breathing, blood-filled, spirit-filled person like myself. Yes. And that you reside the spirit of God and the spirit of the first man that was created. And therefore, you and I are one. That is what yes. we're going to be. Recognizing that we are one. We are members of the same family. Yes. So when we define Ubuntu, we are saying, uh, we are speaking about a spiritual philosophy of Africa, mm -hmm. uh, where in the African or the people recognize themselves as inherently part and connected to the other. Africa, uh, Africanism does not believe in the disconnection of people as mm -hmm. separate. Uh, the Western population values a lot the individual personhood. Mm. I am myself and I belong to myself and my emotions. Everything about me is me, me, me. Whereas in the African context, we recognize that I belong to God and I belong to those who brought me into this world and those that I share this world with yes. and then myself. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah. And so if I recognize that as, as we have lost Ubuntu, as we become Ubuntu, Ubuntu. I don't know, the sound is a bit... Mm. Mm -hmm. okay. so I think I had my hand there. Can you hear me better now? Yes, now I can hear you better. Yeah. Oh, sorry, I had my hand on the speaker, I think. So mm. as we become, as we grow in the process, again lost, lost again lost. Mm. Yeah. Uh, let me make sure that I'm on Wi-Fi. Mm. Yes, I'm connected. Let me switch off the data. Now I hear you well. Uh, I think I was streaming over data. Okay. Mm. Mm. I was probably streaming over data. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much. Yes. Yeah, so as I grow in my process of Ubuntu, of becoming Ubuntu, coming into that a uh, mental and spiritual recognition of me being an integral part of the whole and not mm -hmm. the whole by myself, then I become Ubuntu. And I begin to show attributes of Ubuntu. And those attributes are attributes that recognize me in the center of the universe as part of the whole with the upward, outward, and in one postures. Yes. Yes. Actually, you explained so well in the book about upward, inward, and uh, yeah, upward, outward, and inward postures. Yes. Can you Explain a bit about the upward. I know is you know the spiritual, the spiritual yes. being of yes. yes, yes. So we 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 will recognize that we are part. We we did not create ourselves. Yes, and that is upward posture. That is the upward posture. The upward posture is a posture in which the person recognizes that they did not just become mm -hmm. they did not evolve and create themselves and become a someone or something or a power or an entity however you want your mind con can conceive it because mm -hmm. what what makes it difficult for us to interact with the spiritual is the blockage of the mind <laughs> yes yes the mind cannot comprehend 
the, the, the depth of the invisible dimension. And therefore we find words fail us. Therefore, most of us just go to that place where we call the divine God. Mm -hmm. And it is that place of recognizing that God created mm -hmm. a loving God created human beings. Mm -hmm. He created us in his image to do his will on earth and to fulfill a certain purpose. And that those of us who then pass from this world and join the invisible world become part of that consciousness of God and be continue to inform and help those who are living uh, to do that will of God. And we also recognize that there are many other entities within the spiritual realm that are important in that. That is what the, in the upward, uh, uh, in the upward posture. posture of mm -hmm. Ubuntu is the recognition that first and foremost, there is an invisible dimension mm -hmm. up, which is, uh, which, is in, in sin, which is senior or upper than the, car, the, the, the physical realm and mm -hmm. which is more important than the physical realm. And that really explains why Africans everywhere are spiritual. Mm -hmm. Yes. You'll see yes. even in America, the, mm -hmm. they are, the people of African descent are all spiritual people. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, we are spiritual yes. people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the outward posture. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The outward posture is a posture wherein we then recognize now that we know who we are in terms of that, we recognize that there are those around us, connected beings around us. Around us, yeah. Our, our living parents, our siblings, um, our colleagues, our friends, our neighbors. Our neighbors, neighbors yeah. Yes, our neighbors, uh, uh, those that work, our employees, our employers, all those people become part of the outward posture wherein we are readily available to be of assistance to any of them. The African looks to be the solution at all times. We look to be the provider at all times. We look to be the ones that can embrace and bring help to the next person. And that's our outward looking. So we are always forever, our eyes are always looking to see who is immediately around me that needs help. How can I be of assistance to the other person? Mm -hmm. and, and that requires our inward posture to be intact before we can go to the outward of posture. posture. Exactly. So when we are fulfilled in our inward posture, in our recognition of who we are and the wealth that resides within us, because it is from a position of wealth that we're able to give. And the African, mm -hmm. the concept of poverty is a Western cognition. Yeah. The African has never seen themselves in terms of wealth or poverty mm -hmm. we always have enough yeah <laughs> we're always at a position and a place of having more than enough and that is why we even have sayings in our proverbs in Luvenda we have a saying that banaba mutu ba 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 what is share? <laughs> At least mm -hmm. I forgot, I'm forgetting my language. They share the head of a locust. So at the wow. bare minimum, when I have nothing else, I can catch a locust. And I know I can eat a locust. And even if that locust, I had eaten everything, there's still the head. I can still share the head of yeah, the head. locust. So no, okay. you know. You've talked about the outward posture. You've talked about the mm -hmm. inward posture. Yes. And these are the clashes we have internally when we come here. Mm -hmm. 
because you know when you talk about inward posture is identity yes and i will yes. give you an example of myself when i came to the netherlands you know i came here because i had a partner so mm -hmm. i came to build my life here and i started working mm -hmm. and up to now i worked you know i came with my african ubuntu yes but the reality <laughs> was so different in the workplaces. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. even mm -hmm. up to now, mm. in the Western world, mm. you will never hear anything private about your colleague. Mm. They don't share. Sure. They only share work. You see, in Africa, so you, you have know. friends your whether friends, they're married or not, whether they have friends, whether they have children, whether they're struggling at home. They, they are able to separate private and business. And that is what is so difficult with us Africans. So we <laughs> come here mm -hmm. and think, oh, he's my colleague. Let me talk about my husband. Let me talk about mm. my friend. My son is sick. He doesn't mm -hmm. work here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And mm, colleagues mm. don't visit each other at home. And when you 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 experience bereavement, nobody comes. Nobody comes mm. unless you write an invitation. Here, you don't just go to bereavement. You have to be invited. You have to be invited. My neighbor, I'm, I'm house number eight. So the next house is number six. You know, we have even numbers on the left and uh, odd numbers on the right. So my immediate neighbor last year, uh, in July last year, I, I had a magazine and I wanted to share with a lady I know. I know this lady, she works with the funeral service. So she said, oh, Odile, I received your magazine. Thank you so much. But in April, I was at your neighbor's. I said, eh, this is July. She said, I was at your neighbor's. I said, what? Because you know, if you hear she was somewhere, it's not good news. <laughs> I said, what? She said, yeah, we buried her on, in April. I said, you don't mean it. My immediate neighbor, I say, you don't mean it. Yes, she said, your neighbor, the lady. I could not believe it. And none of us here knew. So I told my husband, do you know our neighbor passed away in April? She said, are you sure? So we, we shared, I shared with the, our other neighbor. I said, oh, I remember in April, I saw well-dressed people in black in suits. So it must have been that period. So yeah. this lady has been sick the whole day, you know, the whole time. I think she had cancer. We don't know. We are not told she dies. We are not told she's buried. We are not told. And this is the reality in the Western world. Mm. And I ask myself, what is richness? Mm, what is wealth? What is wealth? So anyway, I just wanted to I cut you short a bit to explain mm -hmm. to you the clash that we experience with mm -hmm. our food. And mm -hmm. we come here, the reality is so different. Mm -hmm. And like this organization that called me to explain Ubuntu, it's a care organization, you know, they mm -hmm. care for the handicapped people. Sometimes they mm -hmm. eat. And they are mm. trying to teach their, their people that neighbors mm. can also care for you. Mm. You don't have to take your, uh, uh, you know, physically challenged child or spiritually child, you know, handicapped child to an institution. Mm. Or your mm. age, you can create a community. Institution. Yes, yeah. because the community, you know, the way the African community was set up, we took care of our mm. own. Mm. And for mm. me, it was amazing to see that while we are busy killing our Ubuntu, which is actually wealth in itself, 
Eish. the Western world is now grappling to understand how the African what handles was their issues. Yeah, yeah. How can they, in, in what is seen as poverty, continue yes. to thrive? <laughs> yes, yes, mm. yes. So, uh, yeah, so I cut you short, but you may continue with your explanation about, you know, the outward and the yes. inward. And yes. inward, I really want you to talk about the inward posture of knowing yes. who you are. Because yes. remember, we have also people who have come from Africa and they have come here and they have children. And these children mm. are struggling on who we, were, who we are. Mm. How do people of mm. African descent ground mm. themselves Mm. Mm. Yeah. Mm. because it's a very big problem especially for actually all people of African descent who live out of Africa mm. yes so mm. how can they know who they are mm. how can, mm. where can they lean on mm. because it's mm. the leaning on mm. in mm. knowing who I am mm. 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 So in the inward posture, mm -hmm. the African recognizes that they're not alone. Mm -hmm. And there's your leaning on. Because when you lean on, you're not leaning only on in, in animate things, mm -hmm. you know, that cannot answer back, that cannot really give you, uh, although when you are really deep, even inanimate on objects can give you that support. But at a superficial level, the animate uh, uh, understanding that you are not alone. You are not alone. You are part in, in, of an entire community, visible and invisible. Uh, and the visible people you can give to and you can receive to. Uh, it is strengthening ourselves in understanding that uh, the love of God, you know, we we don't depend on our own loves our mm, own yeah. love can fail us our own love can fail us so when our own love fails us we tap into that love of god that goes beyond judgment mm -hmm. that doesn't say yesterday you didn't come to my house yesterday you didn't greet me that love that just says you know what even mm. if you didn't greet me yesterday, you didn't come to my house yesterday, you didn't share the head of the locust with me yesterday, there must have been reasons why you did that. I put that aside and I recognize you in your need today. So it is benevolent love. It is love that goes beyond circumstances, love that goes beyond uh, 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 the, the understanding or the comprehension or the wanting ju of justification of people. When we are in that uh, 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 benevolent love, we trust that God is in charge of all things and mm -hmm. that he's able, if there is an injustice that has been done against us, it's not for us to revenge ourselves, but he will take mm -hmm. care of that. And therefore we are able to take care of even those people that one may regard as enemies. Wow. You know, that's how we ground ourselves. It is mm -hmm. trusting that number two, not only God will avenge us, but number two, that people are innately efficacious. They know what is best for themselves and mm -hmm. how to take care of themselves. And that is why judgment is not part of our vocabulary. You will, it is very difficult for, for you to find a way that says this is right or this is wrong in Africa. Yeah, yeah that is true. <laughs> that is true. Mm -hmm. If you were to find, look for a way of for right and wrong, you will struggle. You will end up you'll maybe struggle. With evil, you'll end up with maybe with evil and good. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Those that will be the nearest, the nearest words to, to right and wrong. Because yes. we, do not, we do not interact with people in terms of right and wrong. We mm -hmm. interact with people from a heart of purity. When our hearts are pure, we see only pure things. Mm -hmm. We see only pure things and we see people in purity. Because mm -hmm. we do not know, we do not, I, I, I do not, I can, even if I may become your best friend, Odilia, your husband, your own husband does not know you. 
That's true. He can never fully understand or understand know you. Understand you. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> mm. So if he doesn't know you, he cannot judge you. He cannot judge your motivations, why you mm. do what you do, mm. how you do it, why you prefer waking up late or prefer waking up early, you know? Mm. Why mm. maybe you cook and you don't clean after yourself or you love cleaning and you don't love cooking. He can't judge those things because it's he doesn't know what informs you at the integral and core part. And so part of that inward posture is that recognition and the humility to understand that I cannot know another person. I'm struggling to know and understand myself. Myself, yeah. How can I know the next person? And therefore yeah. I move and I interact with the next person from that per perspective of humility of saying, I don't know. I don't presume to know. And also that you're not perfect. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. So, I'm not, mm, so don't, let me not lay high standards for other people because I myself am not perfect. I'm not perfect myself. How can I expect perfection from others? And in fact, what is perfection? Yeah. Because that is a standard as well that I am creating. What mm. standard am I using to create that perfection? My perfection may actually be imperfection. The yeah. same way that we see Europe's perfection is actually Africa's imperfection. Perfection, yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. And there's a lot. You see, like the way the systems are well arranged here, it's Africa's mm. imperfection. Mm. Because you know, exactly. I cannot just go to my neighbor. I cannot just mm -hmm. go and knock. Mm. But in Africa, I can go and knock at a neighbor's and I'm welcome. Even, even, even open because I see you haven't come out today. No. Yeah, <laughs> you haven't come out. So there must be something wrong. Yes. <laughs> in Africa, in Africa that is what they say. I've not seen you. Eh? Yeah. Two days I've not seen you. So are you? Mm. Mm. And you know what informed? Mm. Mm -hmm. what informed that for us was living in the wild wild place like africa where a lion can come in and eat you yeah. we have to see you <laughs> yes yes or a snake crept into exactly. your house has bitten yeah. you yeah so we must so we see you mm. we must see you we must see you so that is that inward posture of recognizing i mm. am not of my own I am part of a whole mm. and I am not perfect. So I cannot expect perfection of other people. I need to always uh, uh, err on the side of, 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 of being gracious, mm. of, of forgiving and of not judging and offering dignity to other people at all times. Uh, mm. when I see that there's in, in, indignity and believing the best of other people and, and recognizing that, you know, they're trying their best. People are, are trying their best. Mm. Mm. Uh, everyone is trying their best and, and filling our lives with joy and removing yes. ourselves from fear because fear is also another thing that's foreign to Africa. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I yet we have... Hmm, we have learned it because fear comes from the sense of lack. Mm -hmm. And Africans never lacked. We, we never always... lacked. And that is, why, that is why the Greeks called Africa Africa, mm -hmm. the place that is devoid of horror and cold. Wow. Mm. It's devoid of horror and cold. So mm. we did not know horror, no cold, uh, both in the physical and spiritual sense of it. We did not know it. Uh, what it's it's now... external, external people that came to bring horror to Africans. And taught us horror. Wow. And taught us horror and taught us to be fearful. So mm. that when you approach another person, you're no longer approaching them with the joy of, oh, another person, you're like, eh, there's a person in front of me. So people have become animals. I remember when I came to Europe, you know, where I live, I think there are about only five people. So anytime I, met, I saw a black person, I was so excited. 
and let's go up. Right. And I'm saying, all right. And I'm wondering, what is it? <laughs> because I would be so excited when I meet a Black person. Mm-hmm. But I receive very cold shoulder. Mm-hmm. Eh? Mm-hmm. And I'm wondering, mm-hmm. what is it? Mm-hmm. So I learned quickly that not every Black person is excited to see me. Mm-hmm. And, and that is very because, interesting. That is because those have been more, it's people who have completely lost their identity. Mm. People who are maybe second, third generation African yes. in Europe, and they've become completely European uh, in their thinking. Mm. And sometimes, even if you were to ask that person, where do you come from? You know, in Africa, where do you come from? They are quick to distance themselves from that African connection. No, Mm. I come from here. My parents have always lived here. We are from here, you understand? And and so, and and you can see that there is that thing of why do you think that you and I are the same? Yes, yes. It is uh, even, I don't know whether you followed, it was world news where one of the royal family members in the UK insisted on uh, asking a lady who I think the, the, the great grandparents came from Jamaica and she kept asking her, where do you come from? I don't know that you saw that. Oh, Dr. Dube? Oh, you're back. You were frozen. I don't know. Okay. That you, I don't know whether you heard my question. I don't know. It was yeah, a, I, I, can hear, I heard you. It sounded like it was coming from your side. You were slow. But you oh. were talking about the, the, the royal person who was asking about where do you come from? Because yes. the grave somewhere in the ancestry. In Jamaica. Somewhere. Jamaica, yes. And um, I mean, some people especially the white folks did not understand what was wrong with that question. So I have one good friend who asked me, he's white and he, he's very open. He says, Odilia, I just want to learn everything. So he asked me, but Odilia, what is wrong? Because I always ask African people where you come from. Then I told him, you see, if you ask me, I'll proudly tell you I come from Kenya. But if you ask somebody of a descendant of enslaved people, you are only adding oil to the fire. Hello. Is it me who is gone? I think it's you. Yes. You think so? Let me check my Wi Fi. Uh, I think it's you. Okay. So, anyway, but let's. Uh, yeah, let's continue in the meantime. Yeah, so I was telling him, you have to realize there are two different uh, Black people. Mm-hmm. We have the Africans who know their heritage, where they come from, and we have mm-hmm. our sisters and brothers who are stolen, mm-hmm. whose mm-hmm. identity mm-hmm. was taken, whose languages were taken. So it's very mm-hmm. important to, to be conscious of that. Because even me, when I came mm-hmm. to Europe, I was not understanding, but why don't they want to to be, you know, to be identified with us? Yes. And one of them who looks exactly like me told me I'm not African. And it hurt me so much. But I came to understand, oh, his heritage was taken. His language was taken. So why do Mm -hmm. I expect him Mm -hmm. to embrace Mm -hmm. my heritage? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm, so the mm-hmm, identity mm-hmm. issue is huge. It is. Attacking. It is. And and I think for us to reclaim Ubuntu as Africans, especially in the diaspora, mm. begins with that painful embracing of the fact that we were stolen and removed from our homes. Mm. And to recognize that even if we do not know where home is, 
but we are in te- by virtue. You know, I, I am so grateful that God made the African to have melanin and to be just a distinct person. You cannot mm-hmm. run away and say you come from another place no. because of the way he created us and made That's, us look yeah. in our melanin and in our features and, and in everything. So even if you were born in whatever continent, by virtue of you possessing that genetic material that gives you the phenotypical features that we have, the first step to regain Ubuntu is to embrace Africa as home. Fantastic. Um, Yeah. And try as much as possible to understand the history. And that's why I wrote the book. The Mm -hmm. untold history of Africa. And people Dr. Chucky, you're gone. So any other in Germanic. Dr. Chucky? Am I gone? Am I still gone? Yeah, you're gone now. You're back. Uh, So one of the I think this is the grounding that I was looking for, especially for the our our descendants of enslaved people in the Mm -hmm. diaspora. First, mm. you say it is to accept Africa as home and learn mm. their culture and history. Mm-hmm. 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 Yes. Continue. So I was saying that that is part of the reason why I wrote the book, The Unknown, The Untold History of Africa and Her People, All Her People from Creation, so that any person of African descent may be begin to call themselves as Africans. They can be Afro, uh, 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 Dutch, you know, Mm -hmm. Afro, they must put that Afro in their their description of who they are so that their Mm -hmm. children and their children's children may know and connect back to home. When they do that, then the next thing can be those who can afford to. Even from my book, one can easily see, okay, I probably come from the East. I probably come from the West, mm. the North and the South. If I come from the South, these are the, 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 the people, the, nation, the nations that are still there that I can connect to. I'm either Zulu or Sutu or whatever. If I'm from the East, I'm either Kenyan, you know, mm. from the West and just, uh, even if you can't say completely to this nation, but at least to the Western people of Africa, and then choose whichever one you want to attach to yourself. attach yourself to. Yes, you know, if you cannot, uh, uh, because even the genetic tests will not be able to tell you completely where you mm-hmm. come from. Find mm-hmm. one that you can attach yourself to. Mm-hmm. Go and listen. If there's any historical records in your own family, they'll tell you something. Because even if you were sold from Ghana it does not guarantee that you come from Ghana. Ghana. You could have been yeah. coming from South Africa. You yes, could have been- Because remember there was also immigration in the continent. Like you see my, my yes. name, my African name, Anyachi, mm. Mm. is a Nigerian name. There you go. There it's you go. We walked serious. freely. We walked freely. We married freely. freely we were yeah. one people, exactly. And mm. when it came hunting to of slaves, we were hunting everywhere. Yeah. We were not just emptying out Ghana. <laughs> Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Like, you know, like uh, in, in Kenya, there was a, also a lot of slavery, I think in South Africa too. Yes. The, and the Along entire the, coastal area. The, the entire coastal area, Kenya, Tanzania, Somali, up to, down. And then from the north, the Arabs were coming from the north yes. up to Uganda. Yes. Yes. And you know, as we're just on the border of Uganda, mm-hmm. from, and then from Mombasa, from the coast, they were also going inward. What stopped them are two things. The Maasai were very mm. fierce warriors and the lions. Mm. Mm. That is what mm-hmm. stopped the Arabs to really mm. go into the interior mm. of Kenya. Mm. But you can imagine mm-hmm. if people were coming from the north and others are coming, we could, they could have emptied Kenya. Empty and completely, completely, completely. So what you have mm. as a, a people in Kenya at the moment, you, you would never really know where they come from because no. they're being pursued from every angle. Every angle, yeah. 
Yeah. Exactly. And in so our folk you, tales, yeah. you can see that, you know, where children are being told, don't talk to strangers, you'll be stolen. You can see that also in our folk tales. Exactly. Yes. Exactly. Dr. Tabi, I'd like you to talk on this topic of forgiveness because it's an important part of Ubuntu. Yes. And what I realize is that especially we people of African descent, we hardly forgive each other and mean it. Mm. Mm. That mm. is my experience. Mm. Mm. That you mm. can tell somebody, okay, I got it wrong. Forgive me, let's move ahead. But they block you. Mm. Mm. Yes. And, 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 and unfortunately, that's, that's a new and strange phenomenon. Mm. Um, and it is easier to hate someone of your own nation than mm -hmm. one from the oppressive nation. In fact, you would take, so you would project your anger at your oppressor onto your own brother and sister because they are easier mm -hmm. to hate. The oppressor, you feel disempowered to have any emotional connection towards except that of a in the Stockholm syndrome of, of, of admiration, in fact, because, oh, this person has this much power. You know, when I grow up one day, I want to be like them and have that kind of power. So Ubuntu, the integral part of Ubuntu is the ability to forgive. And that mm -hmm. ability to forgive again comes from the understanding that because we did not create ourselves, we are created by God. It is for God to avenge us where we have been wronged. So we can quickly and easily let go of a wrong done against us and love the person because when you understand avenge the vengeance of God, you understand that in fact, without your protection, that person is going to suffer. If God were to truly avenge that person, mm -hmm. they would need somebody to speak on their behalf. They mm -hmm. would need somebody to speak on their behalf. So when you forgive someone, you are releasing it to God to handle it in the best way that he knows can handle it. And you set yourself free from that emotional baggage of always remembering, you did this to me, you did mm -hmm. this to me, mm -hmm. you did this to me. And figure, trying to figure out how can I get back on against you? How can I repay you for the evil that you have done against me and and that lack of forgiveness within an african is the is where you you see the complete loss of ubuntu, ubuntu. because the mm. african was able to forgive isn't it yeah yeah before, yeah. before colonialism when, Af when, when the african cannot forgive you must know that person has completely lost the 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 the, the, the barometer of ubuntu Either they were never taught Ubuntu, that uh, lineage, that genetic coding has ceased from their system. For generations in their family have not experienced Ubuntu. Because for Ubuntu, we are, as I have explained, number one, you don't judge. Number two, you understand you're not perfect. Number two, so if you understand all those things, it becomes easy for you to say, oh, they did not mean ill toward me. Because lack of forgiveness is saying this person meant ill towards me. Thank you. The mm. other thing I'd like you to speak on is speaking for the voiceless. Mm. Because this is something that I find the African has lost. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'll give you a simple example in a WhatsApp group, 
uh, and you find maybe somebody has asked a genuine question, but the administrator is angry and removes this person from the WhatsApp group and nobody is speaking about it. So I feel like the African has also lost this voice of speaking up for people and saying, hey, mm. but I saw this. And I mm. think he meant she did not mean the way you think. Mm. Yes. Mm. So mm. I think it's also mm. part of, you know, recognizing yourself. Definitely. Mm -hmm. You see, the power of Ubuntu or Ubuntu was powerful or is powerful where one is not oppressed. Mm -hmm. Once there is oppression, it, it becomes difficult for people to live within the authenticity of Ubuntu because then they are also afraid of being the next victim. Exactly. I'll give you an example. I remember when I was, I think, 18. Uh, I was in a public vehicle. In Kenya, we call Matatu. And we were, mm. I was traveling from one city to another. Mm. And in one part, it was a forest. But of course, mm. there were few houses. It mm. was really not densely populated. Most of it was a forest. Mm. And on the road, mm. we met two men who were beating up a woman. Sure. And the woman was bleeding. Mm. And the woman ran in front of the vehicle and cried, help me. Mm. I'm being killed. And one person in the, the driver really wanted to stop and said, let's help this woman. Mm. And other people said, maybe this woman is, you know, one of them is their husband, which mm. could have been. Mm. And she's being disciplined. So do not interfere with people's private, private affairs. And the driver went away and we left that woman being beaten by two men. I have never, you know, that image has never left me. Mm. And I've always asked myself, why did we leave this helpless woman mm. beaten by two men? She was mm. bleeding all over. Mm. She was and we and I mean and, and I mean this is a taxi full of about 16 people who could have easily stopped the man. Most of them were men. Mm. Mm. I've never because known what he, happened to her. Yeah. 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 Because you see, in that instant, you have now become part of the oppressor's um, uh, uh, agenda <clears throat> of capitalism mm -hmm. that forces you to account for things in terms of time. Mm -hmm. And so for you to stop the matatu and restrain the men and find out what the issues are, you would then be forced, like he's saying, maybe it's a woman, the one is a husband and is uh, disciplining her. You then have to be forced to go to the community yes. to speak on behalf of that woman. In fact, and one of them the, shouted, this is my wife. Mm. And, and even if it is your wife, that is an erroneous perception of African uh, a, a culture to think that a wife becomes a man's property. property. Mm. They did not become a man's property. They became home builders yeah. for the man in the man's home. And they became an integral part and important part of increasing that home. And they would be spoken for by the entire family. So a man could not discipline his own wife if they, let's yeah. just say, for the lack of the proper word, could not discipline his own wife. He would have to go and speak to his elder brother. Yes. That this is what the wife is doing. Okay. They would have to go and call her parents mm -hmm. 
That is true. To come and teach her how to live within a home, not beat her up. Yeah. So it is part of that whole disturbance by colonization and the entire capitalistic cohesion that says we cannot stop because if we stop, we are disturbing something that may require our time. Yeah. It will require our time. It will disturb our journey. A mm -hmm. journey of one day may end up taking three days. Yeah. But what if we stopped? Then we are helping to revert a whole community that is losing itself in this capitalistic, uh, 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 oppressive uh, 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 and co co cognition and bringing them back to you can resolve this in another manner. If you, that is why in the Bible, Moses wrote a law. If you do not want your wife anymore, you know, give a certificate of divorce and let her go. Because this is what he was preventing, that two men will then beat her up. Yeah. You know? So it is that thing, why we do not speak for the, why we do not speak for the voiceless is because we also don't want to become a victim. We have sold ourselves to capitalism so much that our time and our standing in society is more important to us than Ubumundu. Thank you. But one more last explanation I'd like from you. I think you saw what happened in the US where black police officers beat up a young black man. I haven't. You <laughs> have it. Oh my God, it was all over in the news. When was this? I think it, because they buried him last week. Oh, I was away. I was on holiday last week. So I was oh, completely yeah. off. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which is good. But five police officers, black five police African, officers, five Afro descendant policemen, they beat, beat up, up a, a very young man, Afro descendant men as well. Wow. I think he was 29, very thin, small. He's not like, you know, he's not well built that you would be scared of her. And I cannot understand mm. why none of those police officers said we are doing wrong. Mm. But they beat him thoroughly mm. for nothing. Mm. Mm. And Is you that do know the syndrome. There you go. I wanted to say you do know that it is that it is part of that whole, I mean. The entire Black Lives Matter movement was built on a police brutality, and it was it has thus far been exclusively white policemen beating up and or killing African Afro descendant men. You know, and I'm sure there is pressure within the police force to show that it is not a racist issue mm -hmm. but it is just a crime issue and any policeman confronted with crime or the 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 suggestion that there is crime will respond in like manner so now you've completely uh, closed off and hidden the true racist agenda within that by saying see even afro descendant of a policeman kill and murder their own because i've never seen where five white men have beaten up their one that exactly it has always been one or two a white man even even a, even an, a, an afro descendant mm. one it has never been five of them it has been one mm -hmm. or two mm. it has never been five so what brings on this a, a dog pack mentality what brings it on except mm. for us to be seen as a, a policeman who are doing our work and we see no color and if it's even if it's an afro descendant mm. person we will mm. take them and i mean what well i mean 
you don't understand it. How do you beat that person up to a pulp? You are you are enforcers. Why don't you cuff him? You mean five yeah. of you cannot cuff one person? Cuff one person who is harmless, who is not armed? Yeah. Thank it you. Is, uh, when Africans are, when, when, when oppressed people are in institutions created by the oppressor, oppressor yes. they will do their best to disown their own so that they're no longer, they can be accepted within the courts yeah. of the oppressor, mm. unfortunately. And that's when- That is the loss of Ubuntu. Yeah. Lost. Yes. <laughs> we were the same word. That is our conclusion that we are, yes. we are losing our Ubuntu and we need yes. to bring back Ubuntu because yes. this lack of Ubuntu is also destroying our own children in Africa in education. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. I have a program called Global Classroom Exchange. And uh, I have a partner in America. Um, and uh, so we we bring schools. We have some schools from South Africa. I really ah. don't know which province. I will, I will find out and let you know. So yes. there's schools from South Africa and schools from Kenya. Mm. Yes, and Ghana will be joining us. And actually we, we do storytelling mm -hmm. and then we discuss the, 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 you know, the principles of life, like mm. you, like Ubuntu, like, mm -hmm. and yesterday we had a fantastic class mm. with the South Africans. Mm. And so we asked them in this story, what are the problems? So they mentioned the problem. So we asked them, what main problems do you have? in your school because we want them to relate to their own environment mm -hmm. and they said substance abuse vandalism in school mm. bullying, bullying and a lot of teenage pregnancy mm. Mm. and if, so we we want to help them Mm. do a campaign for their school and change their school. So that is the, you know, that is the aim. Wow. The, how, how will they, the, you, because they have, the students have to do it themselves. Yeah. What principles of Ubuntu can they use to create those campaigns? Yes. Mm. So actually we need to talk about Ubuntu in yeah. schools. Yeah. Because it will reduce the bullying. It will Definitely, you see yourself as the other person. How do you beat even, yourself? Up? Even in even in teenage pregnancies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it's all these are violations of the mm -hmm. other, because yeah. you don't recognize the other as part as of yourself. yourself. Yeah. Mm. Thank mm. you so much. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. I don't want Thank to take you. more of your time. I really appreciate. Yes. And I will send you this recording. Moraro. Moraro is, is, Moraro is peace to you. Thank you. Asante. Yes. Yeah. yes. Okay. <laughs> so let me let, let's let continue me. becoming Abantu. We continue becoming Abantu. Abantu. Yes. And Abantu means people. People. Yes. In my language, we say Bandu. Bad. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> do, uh, do you speak Zulu? Which is your language? Uh, Ruvenda. In Ruvenda, it's Batu. Wow. Mm. Abantu yeah. is Zulu. In yeah. Venda, is Batu. In, in Luya, Kenya, is Bandu. In Swahili, it's Watu. Watu. Yeah. <laughs> because we are one people. Because we are one people. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Odilia. It is wonderful. Dimukololo wa Rwarani. Ah. Dimukololo wa Rwarani. That means I am the princess of Rwarani people. Wow. Yeah, goodbye. <laughs> Thank you. Goodbye. Yeah.